Good morning and welcome back to botany class. In the previous class, we discussed the process of fertilization. This class too, we are going to discuss the events of fertilization. Define fertilization. Fertilization is the fusion of male and female gametes. When you see the structure of gynesium, it contains stigma, style, and ovary. In the stigmatic surface, the pollen grains are dusted. This pollen grain start to germinate. It develops the pollen tube. So today we start this event from pollen tube in the style. The pollen grain when it dusted on the stigmatic surface, it starts to germinate. This is the pollen tube. This is the stigmatic surface. This is the style. This pollen tube grows towards the style ovary and inside the ovary, the ovule and embryo sac. It reaches the embryo sac and fuses with the egg and forms the zygote. That's the process fertilization. Before that, let's see the different types of style. The pollen tube grows along with the stylar region. It depends upon the types of style. There are three different types of style named as hollow style, solid style and semi-solid style. There are three different types of style. Number one, hollow style. It's otherwise called open style. Solid style is otherwise called closed style. And the semi-solid style is otherwise called half closed type. So three different types of style is observed. Among this, we are going to discuss in detail about the types of style. First type is hollow style. In this style is observed in monocots. In this type of style, there is a hollow canal. This is the stylar region. There is a hollow canal running from the stigmatic surface to the end of the style is present. It secretes a mucilaginous substance. Through this, the pollen tube grows. So in this canal, there is a mucilaginous substance. The pollen tube grows along with this canal. And this mucilaginous substance, it nourishes this pollen tube. So this stylar region which is filled with secretions. The secretions which contains carbohydrates, lipids and some enzymes like esterases, acid phosphatases as well as it checks the incompatibility reaction between this pollen tube and this style because when this pollen tube are germinating it passes through this. So this region is lined by this hollow canal. It is lined by a glandular tissue called transmitting tissue. Transmitting tissue. In this type of style, hollow style, this uh, canal is lined with a single layer of glandular cells. Solid style, second type of style is solid style. It is common among dicots. This type of style is common among monocots, but the second type of style is common among dicots. It is characterized with a central core of specialized, highly specialized cell called transmitting tissue. The transmitting tissue is the specialized characteristic feature of this solid style, which is otherwise called closed type of style. So in this style, the transmitting tissue is present in the central core and the function of this is similar to the function of the linear tissue which is lining, single lining tissue, glandular tissue. So it does the C 
similar function of this type and the pollen tube in the first type the pollen tube grows on the surface of the lining tissue in this tissue solid style here is the central core of cell so it pass through the intercellular spaces the pollen tube pass through the intercellular spaces of this style or region then semi solid in semi solid type of style is the intermediate between the hollow style and the solid style it's the intermediate there are different opinion among the authors some of the authors they suggest that uh, their opinion is this transmitting tissue is present only in the solid state but some others uh, opinion some other authors suggest the transmitting tissue also present in this hollow style also so first question you are going to learn is types of style there are three different types of style observed hollow type solid and semi solid now second topic is entry of pollen tube into the ovule now here is the stigma style and this is ovary this pollen tube germinates it grows along the length of the it travels along the length of the style and enter into the ovary inner to this ovary ovule and embryo sac is there so it has to reaches the pollen tube which reaches the embryo sac here is the embryo sac so it has to elongate it elongates and enter inside so towards this inner to this there are synergies antipodals and the polar nuclei is present so this tube pollen tube when it travels along the stylar region and the ovary and towards the micropylar region is due to the chemotropic substance there is a chemotropic substance due to this it leads to the entry of this but when it moves towards the micropylar region there is a structure called obturator this obturator guides this pollen tube to enter through the micropylar region so this is the micropylar region this is the chalazal region and in the micropylar region the egg is present so fertilization takes place by this male gamete is carrying through this pollen tube so pollen tube which contains two male gametes vegetative tube nucleus and the cytoplasm all this are discharged into this embryo sac the embryo sac consists of synergies this all contents of the pollen tube which discharged into any one of the synergid so if it fuses to the egg it's called syngamy so in this angiospermic fertilization which is called double fertilization double fertilization what's meant by double fertilization in the year 1898 and 1899 st navashin and l gainard they observed double fertilization in lilium and fritillaria in lilium and fritillaria these two persons navashin and gainard observed double fertilization which is common among in dicots so this double fertilization there are fusion two fusions taking place what are they there are two male gametes carried by the pollen tube one fuses with the egg another fuses with the polar nuclei so uh, two times fusion taking place called double fertilization so let us see the process of this double fertilization this is the pollen 
this is pollen tube this pollen contains two male gametes these are the male gametes and it contains a tube nucleus vegetative nucleus so pollen grain contains two male gamete and one vegetative nucleus this is n n in number vegetative nucleus is n the male gamete also n in number haploid then in the embryo sac the embryo sac which contains synergids antipodals and polar nuclei this is embryo sac this is pollen grain pollen grain and this is ovule so fusion taking place double fertilization how it takes place this is antipodal antipodals these are this is egg these are the synergid this is the polar nucleus sometimes this polar nuclei two polar nuclei fuse together and forms as a secondary nucleus so now it's secondary nucleus in double fertilization this first male gamete one of the male gamete this n this n fuses with the egg so this egg cell also n so n plus n it forms the zygote formation of zygote now the zygote is 2n diploid because male gamete is n and this egg cell is n haploid both the haploid cells fuse together and it becomes diploid 2n so zygote is 2n diploid condition and another male gamete this male gamete fuses with this is n this n fuses with secondary nucleus here at first it was polar nuclei two polar nuclei fuse together and forms as the secondary nucleus so this male gamete fuses with the secondary nucleus so this secondary nucleus already it is 2n in nature so this 2n plus 1n now it becomes 3n so it forms endosperm now this endosperm is 3n so from the zygote the embryo develops embryo develops from this secondary nucleus endosperm is developed understand this very clearly this area one word area here they may ask um, what is the number of uh, zygote zygote is haploid or diploid or triploid endosperm endosperm is triploid zygote is diploid and this male gametes are haploid so n number uh, the options they may given and ask different types of question in one verse so understand it very clearly and finally it produces the endosperm formation of endosperm this is endosperm inner to this there is a embryo so now this embryo this is embryo and this is the endosperm so this endosperm nourishes the developing embryo so what's the function of this endosperm endosperm nourishes the developing embryo so this fusion of uh, first fusion this male gamete fuses with the egg 
the process is called as syngamy syngamy two more question very important what is syngamy fusion of male gamete with egg that is syngamy then now this fertilization is called as triple fusion because one male gamete this n fuses with secondary nucleus 2n so it become 3n in number so since it involved three number of nucleus it's called triploid so here another question what is meant by triploid the definition two more question what is syngamy and this fusion is triple fusion the two process of this fertilization is double fertilization the process or this phenomenon is called as double fertilization and this fusion is named as triple fusion and fusion of male gamete with egg is syngamy it forms the zygote so three two more questions are very important syngamy double fertilization and triple fusion from zygote embryo is formed from this uh, uh, secondary nucleus endosperm is developed after this there are number of changes that is the next process is called as post fertilization changes post fertilization changes there are number of changes observed after fertilization in the floral parts you know there are number of floral parts calyx corolla antrisium gynesium where sepal petal uh, this stigma this um, uh, stigma style this all parts are present in the flower after fertilization this all the non essential world the sandrisium gynesium which comes under essential world the petal sepal and this um, uh, this stigmatic region and the stylar region this all wither and fall off after fertilization this all wither and fall and this synergids this synergid antipodals also disintegrate and the micropyla region micropyla region this uh, micropyle of ovule becomes the micropyle of seed to facilitate oxygen and water uptake and this egg the egg changes into zygote now egg fusion of egg after that the zygote it forms the zygote and the zygote develops into embryo and the secondary nucleus forms the endosperm and the ovary this is the ovary ovary becomes the fruit and ovule becomes the seed so after fertilization what are the process what are the events development of this embryo development of this endosperm and the uh, uh, formation of fruit and seed so this ovary become fruit and this ovule become inside the ovule which becomes seed so this embryo developed inside the endosperm so endosperm is the nutritive tissue of the developing embryo then depend upon the mode of development there are three different types of endosperm the endosperm is the result of triple fusion the endosperm the male gamete fuses with the secondary nucleus and forms primary endosperm nucleus pen primary endosperm nucleus from primary endosperm nucleus endosperm is formed so this primary endosperm nucleus is 3n in number 3n chromosomes in it depend upon the mode of development it is classified into three different types of endosperm they are nuclear endosperm nuclear endosperm cellular endosperm and helobial helobial endosperm there are three different types of endosperm how this endosperms are developed this as soon as this 
endosperm develops the primary endosperm nucleus develops it starts to divide before before the zygote divides before the zygote divides the endosperm starts to divide so endosperm uh, undergo number of mitotic divisions and it is not followed by cell wall formation see this is the endosperm endosperm here the cell primary endosperm nucleus first divides without cell wall formation here the cell without cell wall formation is called nuclear endosperm so the condition free nuclear condition exist in the endosperm this is the free nuclear condition which exist inside the endosperm is called nuclear endosperm but in cellular endosperm the primary endosperm nucleus divides followed by cell wall formation so sub uh, subsequent divisions which followed by formation of cell wall in the diagram the cell wall formation taking place here is the cell wall formation of cell wall this is the second type cellular endosperm and helobial endosperm in helobial endosperm this primary endosperm nucleus moves towards the micropylar region moves uh, towards the basal region of the embryo sac so in this diagram it moves towards the basal region of embryo sac and followed by developing two different chambers a large chamber in the micropylar end and a small chamber in the chalacel end this is the micropylar region this is the chalacel region so this region is large region where the cells not forms the cell wall cell wall formation does not takes place and free nuclear division takes place in the micropylar region and this is the chalacel region it may or may not divide so it is observed in hydrilla and valis neria so depend upon the mode of development there are three different types of endosperm apart from this uh, one more endosperm is there ruminate endosperm in this the endosperm formation is uneven or irregularity in its surface so it is called ruminate endosperm what's the function of endosperm the function of endosperm is the endosperm nourishes the developing embryo and in most of the cases the endosperm divides before the division of the zygote so before the zygote divides this endosperm divides so um, up to this you learn in this class all this question so first question is start from types of style five mark question then um, post fertilization changes then types of endosperm and uh, this one this fusion double fertilization and triple fusion the questions you will get it through whatsapp thank you